October 17, 2023 is the 102nd anniversary of the death of one of the greatest personalities the African continent has produced, the great Ya Asantewa, warrior queen of the Asante. Who was she and why is she so important? Welcome to the Cafe Day show and uh, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification button so that when new content comes, you'll be the first to get the notification. My guest for this deep dive into the life and times of Ya Asantewa is a passionate student of history, Yao. Anoche Frimpong. Good to have you back on the show. I'm also grateful to be your guest, Kafui. And I'm looking so much, uh, so forward to, to just listening to what you have to say about uh, Yasantua. But, be, but before we even get to Yasantua, let's talk a little bit about the Asante people from which she came. Who were they? Brief background of the Asante. And then we'll dive into the personality of uh, the day, Yasantua. Well, I will start by saying that Ashanti is simply one of the many Akan states. You know, the Akans had originated from the Bono area. You know, all Akans are Bono people to start with. And among the Bonos, those who broke away and went to unite because of war, Asante, we call them the Ashantis. Mm. Ashanti is an English word. It's an Anglicization of Asante. Okay. Which literally Asante. Asante because of war. Because of war. Because of war. Mm -hmm. Not because they wanted to conquer, mm -hmm. but because they wanted their independence. Mm -hmm. You see, when the Ashanti people settled in the Amansia area, today between um, Sumeja and Bekwai, they were living among the Dansi people and then the Dentra people. And we learn from history that the Dentras had actually conquered all of them and all the states were subservient to Dentra. And we learn from history that at any point in time, the Dentra Hini would ask you, bring your favorite wives, bring all the gold that you have. We also learn that the Doma people would bump upon the Ashantis mm -hmm. and then fight them. At that time, the Domas were not in the Bono region. They were just living around the same area, mm -hmm. an area called Sintresu. Mm -hmm. And they even killed one of the Ashanti chiefs called Obiri Yabua. So the Ashantis felt, or these Amansia people felt they had to come together because of the many wars against them. Mm -hmm. So not the wars they would fight. Mm -hmm. Because of the many wars against them, they would unite and then protect their independence, which indeed they did when after the death of Obiri Yabua, a very able person, in the, a, a very able person called Osei Tutu, being the nephew of Obiri Yabua, who at that time was seven, more or less as a page boy in Denchira and had escaped to uh, Akwemu, mm. because we are told that he had a relationship with the Denchirahini's niece called Abina Beshwa, mm. and they were looking for his, his head. So he had to escape to Akwemu. For two reasons, Osei Tutu will go to Akwemu. The first one was that there was a famous Akwapim priest, or herbalist, traditional priest, those days our prophet, called uh, Okonfo Anochi. Mm -hmm. He was an Aquapim, but at that time, the Aquapims were under the Aquamus. So to call yourself Aquapim was also the same as calling yourself an Aquemu. He was very popular among the dangerous, but because of misunderstanding between the two, they wanted to kill him and he had to go back home. And Osei Tutu knew him when the two of them were together mm. in danger and looking for a place to go. Ashanti, he would not be able to go because of the uh, persistent wars. And as a royal, he feared they would kill him. So he had to look for a place to go. And the safest place was Konfanochi's place, the person he knew. And then also, when he was a young boy, he had already been taken there because his mother was barren. And the uh, Ashanti royals had to travel to a place called Tutu, you know, to look for herbs for the woman to use in order to produce a child. And it worked. 
So they named him Osei and then Tutu, the place they went, the okay. Tutu God. So they became Osei Tutu. So Osei Tutu was very familiar with Akwemu. Mm -hmm. He went there and started working there for some time. Then he heard that his uncle had been killed in a war with the Doma people and therefore had to come back to become the chief of Kwamai Boa Mansia. And he had to come with his friend, uh, Konfu Anoche. Mm -hmm. Why? Konfu Anoche had planned to pay the Denchira people back in their own coins. So he felt like doing everything miraculous and then everything that wisdom could achieve in order to build a new state that will be bigger and more prosperous, even greater than Denchira. Mm -hmm. So he came with him. Now, on his way, the Akwamuhine, realizing that the young man you are traveling with, with is not an ordinary man. All along, we thought that he was a slave from Denchira. Today, we have learned that he's a royal mm. from Asante. So we have to get him men, about 500 mm. men, to accompany mm. him. Yeah. So the accompany, when the leader of the Akwamu group was called Enum Asamwa. And when they go to Kwamai, later to become Kumasi. You see, before the uh, Kuma trees were planted by Konfanochi to determine which town would be the Ashanti capital. Kumasi was called Kwamai. Mm -hmm. And then they planted another one in a town which is now called Kumewu. So he went back as uh, Kwamai Hine, and the uh, Enum people who accompanied him, they settled them at a place called Enum. Ashanti preserved the name. But because we, uh, by way of pronunciation, have corrupted it, it has become a doom, which is about the most famous part of Kumasi. In the heart because, of Kumasi. Yes, mm. because of commercial mm. activities. That's where Enuma Samoa mm. settled with his people. Mm. And they were placed under the domain of the Asafuhine. But the chief of defense of, of Ashanti would be Bantama Hine. Now, as a uh, Konfanochi having settled in Ashanti, he had to start work. And as I began by saying, this man was so wise, and history says that among the wisest of all black people born to this earth, Konfanochi should be counted among the foremost, and we should acknowledge that. Not because he was a man of miracles or magic. That one is based on oral tradition, and we cannot prove it, so we have to discount that. But we are talking about practical wisdom. The first thing he did for the Ashanti people was this, that if anybody would respect you, you would need a capital which would be accepted by all the people and ge geographically located at a place such that it will be easier to defend mm. and protect at all times. So he identified Kumewu and then Kwaman, and the result is what we said. The tree, the Kuma tree planted at Kwaman blossomed, and it said that that place should be the capital. The second one was that. So Kumasi literally means what? The under, under the, the Kuma, Kuma tree. tree. Kuma tree. Under the Kuma tree. Mm -hmm. Some Kuma. say Kum, but if you have say Kuma. Kuma, Kuma, Kuma Ase. Ase. Uh -huh. And then Kuma Ewu, maybe a Kuma Ewu. Where the other tree died. Died. Okay. Uh -huh. So one, he had chosen the capital. And the significance of all, always making it mysterious, like it was the gods who asked me to plant the two trees. And the, it is the wish of the gods that this one should die and this, and this should one be. should grow. It makes the people, because Professor Mbiti has always argued that the African is incurably spiritual, religious, religious, very spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so anything that you have spirit attached with the African would easily Accept, and that's why Konfanochi will become great. He was a prophet. Mm. He was the mouthpiece of our gods, and so they accepted Kumasi as a city delivered by the gods themselves. The second one was that if you want Osei to, to his own friend mm -hmm. to become their unquestionable leader, because you see the state started growing at the Asumeja area, and so the preeminent of all the state was the uh, 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 Sumeja, Sumeja state, mm -hmm. even before Kokofu and others would come in. So you needed somebody whose leadership would not be questioned by anyone. He made them to know that on this particular Friday, 
that everybody is supposed to come to Kumasi, the new capital. Go the gods are going to reveal to us the one who would unquestionably be your leader. Mm -hmm. No more rotation. At first, it rotated among the various Oyoko stools. And that was the reason why... What is Oyoko? The Oyoko is one of the seven or eight Akan clans. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have Ediana mm -hmm. and then Asuna. We have Aguna, Oyoko, Asin, Bretio, mm -hmm. Asechiri. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Oyoko, as I said, mm -hmm. one of them. They mm -hmm. are the royals. It was rotating among them. And it was through this rotational system that the Baule people got angry and left and went to settle in present-day Ivory on. Coast. So the thing must be within one royal house so that the blood would flow. And then his tool must be seen to be more sacred and therefore easily acceptable. Mm -hmm. Konfanoche asked all the states forming Ashanti, and you know them, Mampong, uh, Bekwai, uh, Jabe, Ofenso, Insuta, Ejeso, Kokofu, Sumeja, Kumase, all of you come. And they were all assembled on that day. And then he would perform just as we have already said. Mm -hmm. And in the end, before I forget, I should let everybody know that Konfanochi had advised these chiefs mm -hmm. to bring their black stools. Okay. You know, the Akan and then the Ewes, the Gas, we have stools, and then the Nordness have skins. So they should bring their sacred black stools. What is the significance of a black stool? The, whoever occupies the black stool actually occupies the state. Mm -hmm. So if you possess the black stool, it means that family. Is the owner of the state. They mm. alone can install a chief. Mm. Just as in the north, there's a, a certain mm. skin. Yeah. Whoever occupies it is actually the owner. So in contemporary terms, that will, those will be the executive, right? The, the people who run the, 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 the state or the country. Yeah, the, the owner, royals. Yes, the royals. Once you sit on, and everybody has got its own stool. Mm. Uh -huh. And this particular, the, 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 the kings who ruled each of the territories I have mentioned. Yeah. You know, everybody had this stool. And equal to each other's stool. So they all brought their black stools. They, yes, they brought the mm -hmm. stool, and they were equal. Mm -hmm. So one day they brought the stool. Confanoche performed whatever you perform, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't want to go deep inside them. Decide that the God said we should dig a very big hole, and then the next thing will follow. They dug the hole for him. After that, he said, the God said we should put everybody, should put in your black stool. He put in the black stools, and then he covered it. And then he said, our gods are going to reveal to us a stool of all stools. A stool that all this would represent all the stools down there. Mm -hmm. And which everybody will have to fight for. Mm -hmm. Which would never have to depart you. And which, unlike the stools we have buried, should never be sat upon by anybody. Because that stool itself will have to sit on another stool. So the golden stool came about, either from heaven, mm -hmm. as the Ashanti warrior tradition tells us, or wherever it came from, okay. the truth is that the golden stool is still there. And is it true that <coughs> it represents the sum sum, the, the soul of the Ashanti nation? That's the right word. The sum sum of the Ashanti nation mm -hmm. is in this stool mm -hmm. and no other stool. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it's so sacred that no, the, 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 the stool shouldn't touch the earth, yes. okay. never. And two, no one is supposed to sit on it. And it actually sits on another stool. It sits on another stool. Almost like a person. As a person, mm. revered, and, and it's worshipped as God. Mm. So when this stool came about, you know, as students of history, as we have already said, as students of history, we have to go into the philosophy of Konfanochi. You see, before the golden stool were in existence other stools, in fact, the Shantis themselves have a proverb that Kumasi Betu Amakum. So it means that there were some stools in Ashanti. Kumasi came to meet Amakum, Amakum and okay. then Tafu okay. and Ofenso. Our community states. Yes, okay. bigger, bigger than this stool. Mm -hmm. You know. So it meant that for as long as these black stools were present, their occupiers would one day say that ah, 
But after all, I was here before you. Yes, <laughs> that's one. Two, yeah. no matter how sacred the golden stool, my stool came first. Mm -hmm. So now that you have buried your stool, and Confanati is asking you to go and carve a new one, the new one you are carving is younger than the, the one, golden the stool. stool. Yeah, smart statesmanship and statecraft. Yeah, so yeah. now you see that you are subservient naturally mm -hmm. to the golden stool. Mm -hmm. Second, so when you go to war, you know, and you lose your stool, it's painful, but at the end of the day, you always remember that it was a wooden stool and we can at any time carve another one in replacement. Mm -hmm. But this one is solid gold and you cannot easily replace that gold. Mm -hmm. This one came directly from the gods. They were not, it's not made of human hands and human ingenuity. So you have to put everything into it mm -hmm. in order to protect the golden stool. So now you understand the relevance of Ya Asantua. Indeed. So after the golden stool came about, Ashanti now had a new obligation of not fighting for the state or the king, mm -hmm. but to protect the, the stool. golden stool. The very stool <clears throat> that the British governor want, demanded to, take, to be, yes. to be to And be that was in. the essence of their unity. Mm -hmm. Because anytime you install an Asante, you install him to serve the golden stool. And everybody also serves the golden stool. So it talks about Ashanti unity. And then the unity of all Ashantis mm -hmm. because even the Ashanti unit serves the, the golden stool. What is Sikadwe? The Sikadwe. That is uh, Sikadwe Kofi was the name given by Kofuanochi to that the stool. stool. Okay. That's so because it's almost it a, it's a personality. A, a, in fact, mm -hmm. a cult mm -hmm. that is worshipped. Because Kofi is a, so a, bo a boy, a male born on Friday. On Friday. Mm -hmm. So it's like a human being mm -hmm. and a greater human being than the rest of us. You know, and I'm really glad you've given us this history because it will now tie us nicely into the story of Yasantua and uh, her reaction to the demand by this governor for the stool. So let's let's now, from the forming of the Asante nation, uh, let's now dive into who exactly Yasantua uh, was, when she was born, and how she came to represent <coughs> a struggle for independence. Very good. Uh, Yasantua, we are told that she was the queen mother of one of the Ashanti states, Ejesu. Mm -hmm. At that time, Ejesu was smaller in rank to uh, Jaben, Kokofu, and others. How did she become queen mother, though? To be a queen mother, you must always come from the royal house mm -hmm. and you must belong to it from the maternal side. Because Ashanti is a matrilineal. So, side all that. Things. Matrilineal. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, as a queen mother, mm -hmm. Uh, oral tradition says he, she had two children. One was uh, a woman, mm -hmm. a, a female, and the other one was uh, a male, very young person called Nana Afrani. Mm -hmm. And she placed, when the stool became vacant, he placed this uh, Kofi Afrani, uh, Kofi Afrani on the stool against the advice of everybody that one, he was young, two, you are the queen mother, she's your direct child. Mm. So why don't you sidestep him and go to some of his own cousins? Is it the, the, the usual practice of uh, Asantes to have uh, uh, queen mothers install new chiefs? Among the Akans, mm -hmm. Ashanti being part of mm -hmm. the Akans, mm -hmm. the stool belongs to the queen mother. Okay. So among the Akans, women don't uh, cannot be installed as chiefs, but they give birth to chiefs. Mm. A woman among the Akans cannot be a king, but she gives birth to the king. Mm. And so she is revered. I mean, to say that that famous king sitting there, that is There's his mother. mother. Okay. Very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And because she gives birth to you and puts you on the stool, it means that you came to meet her mm -hmm. and the stool. Yes. Between you and your mother, your mother is superior because mm -hmm. she's older than you. And you all came to meet that stool. So mm -hmm. she knows the history of the stool. So when they sit in state, does the queen mother sit next, always, to, yes, next, next to the chief? The, no, it will always be to there. To his right or to his left? It can, it, not to the left, mm -hmm. not to the right. It will mm -hmm. be behind okay. among the, because the sitting is in a war formation. Mm -hmm. So you, the woman should not be exposed. Ah. She should be a place, a place that you be protected. Mm. Because you see that among Akans, mm -hmm. women in public are not supposed to be heard. Mm -hmm. 
they are only supposed to be seen. So you'll be comfortably protected mm -hmm. somewhere. She's behind the, the, the She'll the, be the behind gate. where she could be yeah. protected, but yeah. in the in the fall, yeah. I mean, it will be the men who will be seen. And I'm sure when she's behind, she can be whispering this is piece of advice to the to the. That the is kid. why the accounts <laughs> always say you could be sa abrewa. We're going. Talk to the old lady. The old lady, Ask because lady. women observe more. They are not mm. supposed to talk plenty. Mm. So it gives them time to observe more. Mm -hmm. Second, women sleep with men. Mm -hmm. And so they know the weaknesses of men. <laughs> and all these are reposed in a woman. Mm -hmm. And so we call our women Enna. Enna. Mm -hmm. Enna means she knows. So no name. Mm. So she's Enno or Enna. She knows mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. and doesn't talk plenty. Mm -hmm. That's it. So the queen mother is older and bigger than the chief. Now Yasantua puts her, her own son, her son mm -hmm. on the stool. Anafrani. Anafrani on the stool. And it so happens that starting going back in 1888 or thereabout, there had been a severe civil war in Ashanti. Mm -hmm. You know, the person supposed to be a chief, Kokudia the first had died within 40 days and Kofi Kakari who had been defeated in the Sagrenti war had been deposed mm -hmm. not because of the defeat he was one of the warrior kings of Ashanti and the Sagrenti war was a fight between the Ashanti and the British and the British so at Walsley is, is what was corrupted to Sagrenti Sagrenti okay he had been defeated mm -hmm. the, the last but one Ashanti mm -hmm. uh, British war mm -hmm had been defeated. And this man had been deposed, not because he had been defeated. He actually performed very well in the war, but because he was so kind-hearted and he felt that uh, we bury our dead with so much gold. And we see people walking along the street, not having even food to eat. Mm -hmm. And then the dead has got plenty gold in the grave with it. So he decided to desecrate graves at the royal a mausoleum and to give the proceeds to poor people and then the royal the royal saw it and they deposed it because it means that he was not given respect to his ancestors so his deposition had got nothing to do with his ability to fight mm -hmm. then his younger brother who was placed on the sumen sabosu was specifically told that you have been given the name bonsu like that famous asante Hine who died in 18 24, along with uh, Charles Makati. That man was so brave. He was able to add the entire coast to Ashanti. And where was not part of it. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fight. The, and then that time to Ga was not yeah. part of it. Just central funded. region, yeah. part of western mm -hmm. region to Ashanti. Mm -hmm. You are going to be like him. He was the one during whose time uh, Charles Makati was killed or he killed himself, but his head was brought to Kumasi. So you'll be like him. So that is your name, Bonshu. And the Ashantis remembered that they had lost the Sagranti War not because of anything, but because of superior technology, arms used by the English. Mm. So they also tried to get weapons from Germany yeah. using their Enzima and Ewe mm -hmm. relationship. These are people who knew the because, Germans. Mm -hmm. And so they imported German arms into Ashanti. And the, the German man called Nielsen has started training them. So Mesa Bonsu was to fight. Mesa Bonsu preferred women to warfare. Ashanti oral tradition tells us that he had more than 100 children. He would not fight and they deposed him. After deposing him, the Ashanti said, then if only it is war, Kofi Kakari is there, let's bring him. And others said, no, it is this young man called Akwesi Kusi whose turn it was to mount the stool. And Akwesi Kusi died three days before he could be made a chief. Then another claimant comes in, natural claimant called Yao Chirubwana, who should have been the chief of Ashanti. And then Yacha said, that is my sister's son. I want to place my own son. Then called Kokudia the third on the stool. He later became Prempe the first. So a civil war broke out in Ashanti between these two. Meanwhile, fighting for who would sit on, 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 the, on the or Prempe the first, also called Kokudia the third. Meanwhile, mysteriously, Mesa Bonsu had died 
and then Kofi Kakeri had died. So within a short period of time, about four people had died, remaining these two contestants. And the Ashantis split themselves into two and fought seriously as to who would become the chief. By 1884, this man, uh, Prempe, had been instilled by his own mother. By 1888, the war had actually ended and he had got his peace of mind. Then in 1894, he started asserting himself. This is Dasante Hini. Dasante Hini, after mm -hmm. that, because after the uh, Sagrenti War, they signed the Treaty of Formina. And the Treaty of Formina stated that Ashanti was to make peace with the British people, mm -hmm. serve the British people, to pay 50,000 ounces of gold, to keep clear the road from Pra to Kumase, mm -hmm. to make sure they would protect trade between the coast and Ashanti so that the trade would flourish. And above all else, Ashanti was to give up Elmina. Elmina was their coastal Indeed. ally. Yeah. To give up Elmina, to retain all their troops stationed in Discov, to give up Asen, to give up Denchira, to give up uh, Atem as well. And it was a very big blow. And then Adansi also. He also to give up a dance. Oh, there are something he felt he would not be able to. It was too much for Prempe. It was too much for Prempe. Mm -hmm. And then the governor, Maxwell, you know, was making a demand, an immediate demand for the payment of the 50,000 ounces of gold. So the Asante Hine said, ah, and he added a threat that if you don't pay the money immediately, I'm going to depose you. And the Asante Hine felt that the British on the coast did not understand the very nature or entity of Ashanti. You don't give threats to the Asante Hine. And when you are an outsider, you don't say you would depose an Asante Hine. And then they added human sacrifices. The Ashanti should stop human sacrifice. And you would not understand because the Ashantis, just as all accounts, believed in uh, death as being a, something transitory. You are going to another world. And as a king, you have to go with so many people following you to go and serve you. Mm. So they thought that Ashanti just loved killing people. But actually, it was part of the transition to the other world. And the Ashanti Hine felt if the white man, having lived on the coast for centuries, they do not understand this basic Akan principle. He will have to send uh, uh, people, messengers to Queen Victoria and then address her on it so that this woman would advise her governor. Yes. He sent people. He sent a delegation to the UK. To the UK. And they charged every Ashanti man 10 shillings and they raised enough money. But when they got to the coast, ready to pick a ship to uh, London, the governor met them and told them that they should go back because there was no way you could bypass the queen's representative to go and meet the, the queen. queen over there. Whatever letter, whatever message you have for the queen, I'm here, give it to me. And then the message, uh, the messengers rightfully answered that we have been sent by our king to go and meet the queen of England. And so you are not the one to ask us to go back. <laughs> Let us go there and the queen herself to tell us she wouldn't see us mm -hmm. rather than you returning us. Mm -hmm. So they went after them. The following year, whilst they were still over there, the governor sent one Mr. Stewart and another man called Vroom to the Asantehine to make a demand for the payment of this money. The 50,000. The 50,000 ounces of gold. of gold. And they even split it, how to share it among all the states so that they will pay the money. Secondly, to let the, uh, secondly, to let the Asantehine know that now he will serve the British governor and to accept the governor's representative in Kumasi, the Asante Hine refused. This is Prempe the first. Prempe the first refused to go. And then the British sent another letter, this time making a demand of just a portion of the money, 860 uh, ounces of gold. They brought it down from 50,000. To pay first. <laughs> oh, okay, like a deposit. Yes, as a deposit, <laughs> then the rest would follow. We'll follow. Okay. The Asante Hine would not do that. So they organized a very huge army. And in those days, when you say to organize an army, 
It's not these fancy mm -hmm. troops. Mm -hmm. Rather, people from Sierra Leone, Gambia, and northern Nigeria, mm -hmm. they house their troops. And always you needed an army two or three times bigger than the size of the Ashanti army. And Ashanti army, at the peak of his glory, could raise an army of about 50,000 soldiers. So you needed a huge army in order to subdue Ashanti. Meanwhile, the messengers had returned without meeting the queen. And when they saw the number of soldiers going to Ashanti, they quickly relayed the message to the Ashanti leader that there's no way we can stand these people. So find a way of negotiating with the governor. So the Ashanti quickly sent a message that he was ready to negotiate. And the governor said, okay, so ready to negotiate, so return your troops. And the governor said, I have already spent a huge sum of money to assemble them. So you will pay for the but, cost of mm, assembling the, the woman, and, and then two, if you don't want me to come to Kumasi again, as a Garnet Wesley bent down Kumasi, then meet me at Praso. And when you are coming, come with that small amount we mentioned. Praso is the river, river Pra. Yes, mm. the river Pra, not Chifu Praso mm -hmm. area. Yeah. So bring this money, you know, and what do I say? The Ashantis, the Santihini sent messengers to say that we agree to serve the British government. We agree to stop human sacrifice. We agree to give up on all the states they say we should give up on. And then we also agree to have a British uh, government agent stationed in Kumasi. Why did you think Pepper and the first did that? Why did he capitulate like that? Because he had heard that the army coming was so huge. Mm. And then also, he had learned from the fact that that civil war had weakened okay. Ashanti. Right. In fact, at that time, they would not be able to raise soldiers up to even 20,000. Mm. So he wanted to protect his state. Mm. So that's what he told them. But he himself could not meet the governor at Praso. And the man got angry and continued to Kumasi. So by 1896, he was already in Kumasi. Now the arrangement of seats in Kumasi was that the Asante Hine directly faced the governor. Mm -hmm. And then where the other Ashanti chiefs sat, the uh, colonial army came to stand among them. And the Asante Hine was a very wise man. He was young. And let me say that the queen mother called Ya Echa was given the warning not to place that gentleman on the stool for about two reasons. The first one is that, you know, Nana, the chief is, the stool is rotational. So once you are the queen mother, there will be democracy. Democracy will be seen. If the chief rather is your sister's son, rather than your own son. It's too close. Close, and she refused. Second, the second Fanachi had told them that they shouldn't place a fair-colored man on the stool. And this Prempe was a fair colored young man, very handsome. What was Konfanochi's reason? Because Konfanochi had told them that <laughs> anytime you put a fair colored man, that would be the end of <laughs> the kingdom. Right. But I believe going deep into his head, when we have people like you there, mm. they may be tempted to go after women. <laughs> and when people go after women like the way Mensa Bonsu did, <laughs> You understand? And in Timmy Jakari too, that young Den was a very handsome, mm. fair-colored mm. man. Mm. And he knew that it would disturb the nation. Mm. So he said, put a very dark-skinned person, mm -hmm. possibly an ugly man, and who would obey fearful. all... <laughs> yes, fearful. And obey, obey all the moral mm -hmm. rules. Right. And the queen mother would refuse. They say around that time, <clears throat> a tree planted by Konfanoche in Kumase fell. So the Ashantis were completely afraid. You thought it was a bad omen? Very bad omen, mm -hmm. especially that fair colored mm -hmm. person. The first time going to place him on the stool, somebody like that on the stool. But the woman went ahead. Now let's say something about Ya na, uh, Echa. Who is the queen mother? <clears throat> the queen mother the among Ashantis. Mm -hmm. If you are called Echa, your appellation is Oya Kwan. Oya Kwan, one who makes two uh, uh, ways. The way, okay. Who makes the way. They said during the Civil War period, she was the one who sustained Ashanti mm. and was the one who stood firm and tried to bring about Ashanti, peace between Ashanti and the coastal states mm. and protected trade. 
So they call it a chan or ya kwan. She was able to bring peace mm. between among the Ashantis mm. and between Ashanti and other states. So every Ashanti woman called a chan, the appellation is o -ya -kwan. O -ya -kwan. With the wave. Now, the governor now comes <clears throat> and when the Ashanti unit looked up, he saw that they were she was facing the governor mm. with thousands of troops behind him. And then <clears throat> he had his people behind him who had not anticipated war. Because as I told you, the second letter sent by the governor only mentioned the fact that he was coming to collect money. Yeah, not, 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 not bring troops. Okay. So he didn't know, Achantes never anticipated that they had lured them completely. And all this trick worked because of an Ashante rascal Please, just as when you go to Dunkwa or Jukwa, you shouldn't mention the name in Tim Jakari. Mm. In Kumasi, especially within Menchia Palace, don't mention the name Kwame Tia. Well noted. Okay. This Kwame Tia, so you see that has become part of the tree language, a triate for dissidents. Mm. This Kwame Tia, an Ashanti royal who rather associated with the Fantas and the British mm -hmm. on the coast. Ashanti's uh, enemies. Yes. yes and made Ashanti his own enemy mm -hmm. and would always send his son to the coast to tell them whatever Ashanti was planning. Mm -hmm. That's why the Ashantis have a saying that say Triatia na Bruniati. Anything that Trian would hear, the, the next moment the white people on the coast mm -hmm. would hear. So he became their ally among the and he was given Full protection. Okay. Colonial soldiers right. protecting him. He became a very famous, why say infamous Ashanti man. Everybody feared him. In modern terms, he would be almost like a, an intelligence officer working on behalf of the British. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you put it that yeah, way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they had to protect him, give him everything that this man needed. He had told them that uh, among the, if you're able to take their chief away, mm -hmm. their power will be limited. But apart from that, you should know that you can't just get the Asante mm -hmm. You should find a very nice way of capturing him without war. Because when you capture him, your government too will not leave Kumasi, they will kill him. So the Asante's knew, sorry, the British knew this from Kwame Tia. So they made a sitting arrangement such that capturing Prempe will be easy. Mm -hmm. Because if the Asante's decided to fight, where are your guns? Yeah. Going home and coming back will be too late. Because they came there without their guns. It's as simple. And then the moment you fire, a gunshot, they will kill all the Ashanti chiefs who had assembled to welcome the governor. So when the Ashanti Hine sat there for some time, silence, total silence, and there was nothing he could think of. I said this man was a wise man. He got up with his mother, Nana Yecha, and the two of them walked to the governor. And it was the first time in the history of Ashanti that the Ashanti Hine would get up, remove his golden crown, and then remove his sandals and walk barefooted to the governor. Wasn't that a taboo in Ashanti culture? It was a taboo. The chief, the but chief, he chief to, cannot touch yeah, the ground. He had to commit a taboo, commit a sacrilege just to save his kingdom. Why is it that the chief's feet should not touch the ground? Oh, you are the replica mm. of the gods. Mm. So you have to be protected. You have to behave like God. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be too close to yeah. nature. That mm -hmm. You are not poor. So he went and knelt down before the governor. This is Governor Frederick Hodgson? It was Maxwell. Maxwell. Mm -hmm. He got he knelt down mm -hmm. before Maxwell and pleaded with him that I will serve you. Give me time to pay the money. I would accept your representative in Kumasi, and there will be total peace in Ashanti, and whatever you say, we will do. And then the governor said, please, I have not come here to hear this things. My aim is to collect the money immediately. And then the governor, sorry, the Santehini also replied in all humility that, as you know, the war was fought in 18. 74. Mm. And my uncle Kofi Kakari was the one who brought the war and was the one who should have paid the money. Kofi Kakari did not pay the money. Mensa Bonsu 
did not pay the money. And then today you are asking me to come and pay this money. So for me, it's a surprise. That is why you should give me time to pay. It was negotiating. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. to negotiate. The British had not come for any negotiation. So immediately they seized him. And everybody there, that's all the Ashanti chiefs, they seized them and then started taking them away. And the Ashanti stood there in complete silence because they looked at an army many, many times bigger than their own and then uh, well armed. And they didn't have that level of ammunition. So they took their chief to Cape Coast first, where the governor was, and then later on transferred them to Elmina. And then from Elmina to Seychelles. They deported the king. They deported the king and would not come back from 1896 until 1924. Oh. Now, Kwame Tuya went back to the colony, the coast, and told the government that, you see, the, among the Ashantis, the occupant of the golden stool was not as important as the stool. So until you have gone back for the stool, the Ashantis would always reorganize and come and fight you. Then the governor said, but the king is going to say, yes, the system is matrilinear. <laughs> so when you kill Ashanti men, they don't bother. But for as long as there are women to produce more men, <laughs> men are nothing mm -hmm. to accounts, and in particular the Ashantis. So the chief that you've taken now, they've placed somebody there. Already. Yeah, so please go back and this time go and ask for the golden stool. Mm. Before they realized, Kwame Tuya's son had gone to tell them that they knew the people who were protecting the golden stool and at a certain location. So the governor immediately sent one Captain Amitage with some Hausa troops to go and pick the golden stool. It was at a place called Barakese, very close to Offenso. So they went there. Before they could get there, the queen mother of Offenso, and I believe Kafui, this woman should be given the same prestige and the same reverence, if not higher, than Yasantua, mm. called Nana Afranewa. Had heard this, what? Because when uh, Kwame Tuya's son was living, in fact, Kwame Tuya himself, we are told, was from the Barakese area, the Barre area. So when he was, his son was living with him or him, so she heard it and quickly went with certain royals to pick the golden stool to safety. And the very time the Hausa troops got there with Amitage. The Ashantis had waylaid them and they killed all of them. It was only the white man who was able to escape, but the white, the Hausa people were killed. So it means that this later Yasantua that would war, that would occur, would have been useless and of no consequence if Nana Afranua had not come in. Mm -hmm. So you see the importance of this woman, and I believe that all those hearing us will relay the message to the Fensohine and uh, Asante, and in fact, uh, Asante, Asante Man Council, that something immediately should be done in the honor of Nana Afranewa of Offenso. So the, so the stool was safe? Was completely safe. Okay. Thanks to Nana Afranewa. What was the reaction of the governor? The governor mm -hmm. was very angry. So he came himself, and the new governor was Fred, Sir Frederick Hodgson. Hodgson. Okay. He came himself. To Kumasi. Mm -hmm. And when he came, uh, he told them that, look, uh, uh, the first thing, the, after the defeat of the Ashantis, they had built this um, Kumasi fort between 1896 and 1900. They had completed the fort. So when he came, that was where he lodged, he and his wife, and then a big retinue. They came and then met the Ashantis that uh, you know why we have come. Mm -hmm. Prempe is no more your king. And none of you sitting there should serve Kumasi again. So from today, every one of you is a separate and distinct paramountcy. Nobody to call himself or themselves a Santayin. So after Prempe the first was deported and taken off to Seychelles, did Asante, the Asantes install a new Asantayin? Yes, the still will not be vacant. Mm. They installed 
uh, Asante Hini, Prempe II. The stool has always got to be vacant. Yes, it uh, doesn't, it, it doesn't ever have, have to be vacant. vacant. Okay. So they installed Prempe II. And that was one of the things that annoyed them. Then Kwame Tuya would make them know that. I told you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you kill a thousand, a thousand more shall come and face you. But the thing that when you are able to take away, nothing could be replaced. And that will bring the total annihilation and disintegration of Ashanti. It's the golden stool. Mm -hmm. So go for it. So that day when Frederick Watson came, he was given a, 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 a seat, all right, he and his people. And we are told that at the assembly, the Shantis were very angry, very angry because that second assembly had reminded them of the earlier one mm -hmm. where the British had tricked them and taken away their king. Yes, they came so, there unarmed and they were surprised. Yes. Okay. So this time, their aim was to fight till the last man had died. They would do that. It was their aim. Now the governor starts talking about the fact that people will be made to do communal labor to build government houses in Ashanti. Hmm. All of you people will cooperate with all the southern states as one country and then you will serve us. So no more anybody who would serve the Asante Hine. Nobody called the Asante Hine. You have Kumasi Hine, Ofeso Hine, Jabe Hine, Ejiso, everybody, Kokofu Hine. Hine, Hine is, is, is king. A chief. chief. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on top of the Hine Hine people is the governor. Mm. So in place of the Prempe defense, the Asante Hine, mm. it's now the governor. Mm. And because I can't be here all the time, I will put somebody here in the fort, the Kumasi fort, who would represent me. So when you have any case, anything, you should bring it to the Kumasi fort and not the Menshia palace. Mm -hmm. Then the last one was that, the last but one, he split the money. He said, I know you may not be able to pay in gold now, but you can pay in money's worth. So every year, you will pay 15,000 pounds as interest on the 50,000 ounces of gold until the time that you get the total amount and you bring it to us. Was Hodgson a banker? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you ask King Charles? <laughs> King Charles, a son of Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> so you should do it today. So I'm allowing you to think about that. And as the British would always do, uh, the, uh, anybody with a question to ask, you can ask the question. But before... Arriving at that jancha, he said, look at the chair you have given me. Was Prempe the first sitting on a chair? I'm told that he was sitting on a stool called the golden stool, the Sikaja. I'm sure how he will say Sikaja. Mm -hmm. How do you think he will pronounce it? Sikaja. The Sikaja. <laughs> or Sikagua. <laughs> so please, go and bring it to me because I am his successor. Not just an ordinary successor. His conqueror. And don't ever think that the man will come back. So I am the one here. Give me the stool. And then I will be happy. I will go back. And from everything you've said, he was seriously misinformed. Because no Asantini sits on the golden stool. No Asantini <laughs> sits on the golden yeah. stool. But the positive part of the information was that, indeed, the moment he succeeds in taking that stool away, yeah. it will be the end Something of the gone. soul of Asante. Mm. And we are told that, the, there was dead silence over there for a long while. And there was Ya Asantewa who had come there to represent a Jesu because of the absence of her son. A Jesu is one of the states of Asante. One of the states of Asha, Ashanti, mm -hmm. just to represent Nana Afrani. And we are also told that uh, she became a heroine by virtue of some circumstances. The first one was that when she learned in a Jesu that her only son had been taken away, you know, the female was Amasewa, mm -hmm. and then the male Afrani. When this guy had been taken away, then I would commit suicide because out of shame. They told her not to place the boy on the stool, mm -hmm. and she did it. So he was taken away together with Prempe to Seychelles. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so he said that either I would die so that nobody will scorn me. Exactly. Or when I fight and I'm captured in the war, I'll go and see my son. Mm -hmm. 
So no matter what happens, there will be war, war today. So she was prepared for war. the West before she even got there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when she sat there quietly, because the women are not supposed to be heard. Exactly. She sat there quietly, giving them a long rope to tie themselves. No man would talk because they were contemplating. Look at the number mm -hmm. of soldiers there. And then our own oath that these people cannot trick us a second time. No. We will fight. So they were thinking between these two to fight and die here or are we, what are we supposed to do? To go and bring the gold to and give it to the white man. That was what he had asked for. Mm. So Ya Asantua, knowing that nobody would ask any question, stood up, came forward, then raised the hand. But she was not supposed to speak. But the man would not do it. So okay. she sought permission to speak on behalf of the All right. men. So the first thing she did was to address her own men. Okay. The men of Ashanti mm -hmm. stood up and said, you men of Ashanti, I'm surprised that you have disgraced the Ashanti nation, the very name you bear. Can you recall the days of Okonfuanochi, Osei Tutu, Opokuware, Osei Bonsu, These are all Osei Yawa Akoto, okay. Osei Kwejo. I mean, who would have dared come to Asante, to take our king away. But somebody has done that. And you didn't fire a gunshot. No. In clear sound of very quiet, the man was able to take your king away. You didn't say anything. Far back, four years ago. Today, you come here. The man comes back. And he knows you were not able to fight. That is why he has come back. And as he has come, he asked for something bigger and greater than a human being, the golden stool. And I thought that upon the mention of the golden stool, mm -hmm. you people would have got up. Mm -hmm. And then today, all of us would have died so that there would be no one to tell the story. Nobody to show mm -hmm. the white man where the golden stool mm -hmm. is located. Mm -hmm. yeah. You rather sit down quietly <laughs> as if to say you are thinking among yourself how and when to bring the gold news to, mm -hmm. to the white man. Look, let me tell you something. If you men are not prepared to fight, do you know what you do? You give us your belt mm -hmm. eh, and then take our loins. You know, those days our women were that. Uh, yes, to cover their, 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 their naked their and nakedness. their woman. Yes. Uh -huh. So he said that I am ready to give you mine and I will collect all Ashanti women, they are those things for yeah, you. Yeah, it's almost like their underpants. The underpants. They will give them to the men. To the men. And they will exchange the men for And they will take the best so that we fight the white man. Because I can see that you are women. And once you are women, then the women become the men. men. <laughs> and then he went, she went further to the interpreter. Mm -hmm. And further to the white man. Those days they wear khaki and a white top. And then said, uh, having addressed the men, then she asked the interpreter to tell the white man that I am asking him whether on his way to Kumase, he met Prempe the first. Ask the governor for me. <laughs> and then the governor responded that no. As I was taking off, the Asante Hine had already been taken to Seychelles. And then it's okay. Then tell the governor that among us Ashantis, every chief has his own stool. So the people you are asking the question about the golden stool, they have their own individual stools. And the reason why they kept quiet was that it is only the occupant of a stool who knows where the stool is kept. Mm -hmm. And so the men sitting there, if you had asked them to show them where their own stools are kept, they would have been able to do that. But that of Prempe, they don't know because it is only Prempe who knows. That's why I asked you whether you met him. <laughs> so tell the governor that if he wants to know where the golden stool is located or protected, he should go and bring Prempe to Kumasi. And then when he comes, all of us will go with you to where he will show us and will give you the golden stool. And the governor said, that is impossible. Then Yasantua said, if that is impossible, then you should know that we are going to fight you. We'll do everything 
to fight you in order to protect the golden stool. And if you succeed in taking the golden stool away, then you carry our dead bodies away. Then she spat on the governor. In those days, and still Ashanti women do that. You know, cola. When you chew cola, you know, it helps you to stay awake without food for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So during funerals, you have the northerners, all the northern mm -hmm. states, Mali, Nigeria, everywhere. You take more cola. And because those days, the trans sahara trade route, long time, you don't get water. Cola became a very essential commodity. The moment you chew it, you don't feel thirsty, mm -hmm. and then you don't feel hungry. So when people are either fighting or serious, they chew cola. You call it goro, right? Goro. Mm -hmm. And the accounts will say besen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And anybody chewing cola will have red saliva in the mouth. So this woman spat on the white man, the governor himself, and the saliva, saliva right. marked the red in mm -hmm. his cloth. Mm -hmm. And the man went back mm -hmm. like this. And then the Yasantua directed her attention to the men. That you see, even the woman's saliva, this man fears, and you are sitting there, you can't fight him. <laughs> Tomorrow around this time, all widows in the underworld, mm -hmm. all the widows in the underworld would be married. And I believe you understand. Yes. What, what is it mean? It means the warriors are going to die and go and meet the women down there. And then you get plenty of women to <laughs> yeah, marry. Exactly. Just as the women too will get new men to marry. So it was a way of declaring war. war. That was a very powerful graphic way of saying it. Yes, yeah. and it is also another way of explaining to outsiders mm -hmm. the belief of Africans mm -hmm. that we always believe in life after death. Mm -hmm. And that was the belief of uh, Yasantua, mm -hmm. that after here, you will go there. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, you get more women <laughs> over there to marry. So when this thing happened, mm -hmm. the meeting broke up completely. And Yasantua followed the men. And when they reassembled, they split into two. The men of Kumase, you see, Kumase Asantehine, mm -hmm. he has lost his uncle. He's going to lose his tool. And so he has to do everything to protect Kumase and Ashanti nation. So Kumase first. And then next door, Offenso was ready to fight to protect the Ashanti nation because the goddess too had been taken on his land mm -hmm. and taken to safety by the queen mother of Ojeso. Mm -hmm. So he has to stand with the queen mother. Offenso's Direct brother is a Jesu, the Ansona people, and Asafo, they are one. And in fact, their brother also is the Ochen mm -hmm. He come from the same remote grand, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ofenso and then a Jesu will stand together with Kumasi. And the Kumasi stool is the same as the Kokofu one. So the Kokofu always as Antehine's uncle, traditionally. So he stood with them. And then Adanse stood with them. The entire Ahafu land also stood with them, ready to fight, to support them. And then in Kwanta, ready to fight. And I've mentioned Adansi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. So these two were ready to fight for Ya yeah, Asantua. Then the rest, imagine Mampong, second in command of Ashanti, not ready to fight, mm. and had even decided to join the coast as, as part of the colony. Did Asanti not see that as betrayal? We have to give reasons. Mm. We have to give reasons. Mm. So, uh, in, uh, in Suta, Mampon, Bekwai, and all the others in Kranza in those days, yeah, in Kranza was seven Asante, then, and then Brekum, and then Bontuku. You know, they were, Be Bechem, is, Be Bechem was actually fighting mm -hmm. for the other mm -hmm. side. No. So, they also came together. Virtually, apart from the states I've mentioned, they, all the others decided not to fight the white. And they gave their reasons. The first reason they fight, uh, they gave for not fighting the white people mm -hmm. and to some extent even helping uh, the whites against Yas and okay. troops was that because of the civil war, our numerical strength has gone down. The second reason is that they have taken away all our war leaders. So if we declare war now, those two leaders well, will be inexperienced mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we are going to lose in the war. The third reason is that when we fight the British and we lose to them, then the British will have an opportunity 
of going to look for the golden stool wherever it might be. They will go and look for it and take it. And still will come under them. So why don't you say that we will serve them? Mm. And in that friendly manner, let them know that we cannot give you the golden stool, but rather give us time to pay the 50,000 ounces of gold. So for these reasons, they decided either not to fight, but when it becomes necessary to fight, fight against Yasantua so that the war will end quicker. And when the air war ends quicker, we will use it as a reason, as a premise to tell the white man that you see, we fought against our own people, against our own conscience. So please don't take away the golden stool. We are going to serve you. To offend the disrespect of, of, of the British if they had done that. Well, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> so what happened was that because Yasantua had declared war, mm. the war started the following day. Mm. And lo and behold, many of these Ashanti states fought on the side of the white people. The Yasantua troops used a very nice strategy which was able to sustain them. The period I'm talking about was March, and the war ended in December. Well, which so year? almost 1900. Okay. They were able to sustain it, even though it was just one third of their strength, mm. because of the, their desire, their determination to fight. And history says they fought like wounded lions. They put everything into the war, even though the numerical strength, as we said, was very low. And then also they were able to make the governor and his family a captive because they stayed in the Kumasi fort. And the Ashantis blocked every road leading to the fort. The fort is that fort opposite the Kumasi um, post office Indeed. today. Indeed. And I'm just curious, did, did other women also fight? I mean, no, they, no, definitely So it was no. only yes and But yeah, they, oh, rather they only helped okay. in supplying provisions mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. But they are not too much. But just and to us own was very, very active. Mm. Uh, and in the end, this woman who was also giving instructions everywhere, <clears throat> not knowing yeah. this man, Kwame Tuya, was very close by. And anywhere Yas and Tua stepped, there was some amount of victory for the Ashanti troops. So one night, the woman was asleep. And we thought he was cooking at a, a place near Yinahim on the Sefi Road. This a uh, man Kwame Chua betrayed her. And before she could realize, he had been taken captive. Mm. And that was what was the end of the war. And we should also say, in support of Ashanti, in praise of Ashanti, I, because they were able to uh, make the governor a hostage, a lot of troops, hundreds of troops who were in the uh, fort could not get provisions, no food, no water, for almost one year. And many of them died. Many of them died. But the reason why the governor was able to escape was the fact that two thirds of Ashanti army were supporting the governor. So they were able to help the governor to escape. And then also they were able to assist more troops to come from the north and Nigeria to come and fight uh, Yasan Tua. Do you reckon that if Ashanti had been more united, if it's all of the Ashanti states had come together, the outcome would have been different? They would have won easily. Mm. But my only fear was that at that time, a particular bomb had been discovered or invented, mm. sorry, mm. named after the one who invented the called Perry Martin. Mm -hmm. Called Perry, yeah. Perry Martin. Yeah, the submachine gun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so anytime the Ashanti army had gathered somewhere, they didn't know the essence of this thing. Mm -hmm. As today we see here, mm -hmm. when Ghana hears supersonic, Hypersonic mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So the Russians or Americans could use it to mm -hmm. defeat us so easy. That was what happened. So all we knew was a shotgun, tear yeah. buffer, pam, yeah. pam, pam. Yes, yes, you load, they shoot. Load load. They didn't have the continuous we shooting. Have, yeah, we didn't have this that. This one had the continuous fire. Yeah, power. yeah. You know, called the Perimatin bomb or gun. Mm -hmm. So they used it, and that was the game changer. That was completely the game changer. So I wouldn't be able to tell if, in the midst of this Perimatin mm -hmm. bomb, a full standing Ashanti army could have been able to carry the day. Is that the, 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 the this is a little slight detail, the, the genesis of that expression of time? Premium. Yes. In Ashanti? Yes. It's not a slight detail. Mm. It's, 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 it's a part of, it. of what we are discussing. <laughs> All right. And In I terms mean, of telling the time. It's as simple as that. Mm. So when Yasantua was defeated, mm -hmm. 
when the Asan Tua was defeated, the Ashan, the white people placed these bombs in front of the Kumasi fort. Mm. And then every 12 o'clock, they will release one boom. Okay, it's like more a... the Ashan thing that if you dare organize this Okay, it's like a, like a cannon. Like a cannon. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Like a very advanced okay, one. All right. so boom, okay, all right. Boom, every 12 o'clock. Okay. So every 12 o'clock in Ashanti to this day, we say Premu. Atto, that's mm. a very mountain bomb. Oh, Martin. okay. So it was later on that they changed it and rather used a siren. Okay. Mm. Siren to the wall. Yes, yes, I like And the would remember hey, how they killed us. <laughs> if we die again, this is what <laughs> would happen. But so back psychological to our warfare. Story. Psychological warfare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Back to the story. She was betrayed? She was betrayed, mm -hmm. captured, mm -hmm. and then uh, the that, that famous gun. The Permatan gun mm -hmm. every 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. midday, mm -hmm. the whites will release it, boom, mm -hmm. and the people of Ashanti will hear it everywhere as a warning to them that if we ever reorganize and go and fight the British, this is what will happen to us. Because it killed them in their thousands. In fact, the Ashantis lost 20,000 men during the Yasantua war. Thanks to this, um, the technology, the technology in, in advanced on, on terms of arms. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened to them. Now, let me. Did anybody help Asante in this war? Did they have allies along the coast? Uh, this one they them? couldn't. Mm -hmm. As for this it was one, just themselves they couldn't. Against against the British. Yes, because it was a very surprised one. Mm -hmm. They couldn't. And then let me also say something before I will continue. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes people are made to think that uh, Akans are enemies of. The Dagombes. The Dagombes are enemies of the Ewes. The Ewes are enemies of the Enzimers. Please, it's not true. History, in fact, says that anytime the Ashantis wanted guns, it was not easy to get it in a bulk, heavy load from the coast because they fear that it will help them to get properly armed to fight them. So they would just buy a handful. And they had their allies the Ewe people, mm -hmm. you give just a copy to them mm -hmm. and then they will mm -hmm. quickly make a replica mm -hmm. for so, you. Yeah. So they were always war allies. So what we are learning, we should learn one thing and the truth that years ago, people were united yeah. and people were brothers and sisters. Yeah, so today, mm -hmm. you go to Ewe land, there's so many Akan names mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. because of the trade, the collaboration and the unity. You understand? And you go to Kumasi, the same. Even in Kumasi, there's a whole big area called Amuraga. Mm -hmm. Given to the Ewes mm -hmm. alone. And when the Santehine sits mm -hmm. among them, it's a, a powerful Ewe chief. And when the Santehine dies, they inform him and the Dagomba chief and the Mosi chief of Burkina Faso before anybody will be mm -hmm. informed. And the installation to the same, the number of Kente cloths the Ewe chief had to produce before the funeral will be performed. This is something we know from history. Mm -hmm. So it is not good for anybody to look at your face and tell you that because of where you come from, you are the enemy to the hunters, mm -hmm. you are the enemy to safety. Mm -hmm. We have always been one people, mm -hmm. and that is what we should know. But to Kwame Tia again, before mm -hmm. I finish with Kwame Tia. This man really was... was uh... Ashanti should know him well. <laughs> when Prempa was taken away in 1896, do you know one thing he did, Mr. Kafui? No. Jesus Christ. Kwame Metunya realized that the whites did not allow the Ashanti chiefs to go away with more than one wife. You know, the whites were Christians, They're so one man, one wife. To be monogamous. And the women they left behind, Kwame Metunya capitalized on them. Oh, he took over the women? He took, including Prempe, the first wives. This man married them. The guy was bold, eh? Yes, and in Kumasi, <laughs> he had soldiers, including white people, to guard him. So whatever he wanted to do, he could do it at ease. You will be there and they say, Kwame Tuyasi, I'm a friend woman. Kwame Tuyasi said, you should be. And he will even be happy going there because he, wore, he dressed like an European. He ate like an European. And among those who served him, these colonial uh, uh, soldiers, and among them, white people. Did it end well for him? For him, it ended very well because he died peacefully on his bed <laughs> as one who was able to seduce the wives of famous Ashanti chiefs, including Prempe Defense himself. And that is why I told you that when you go to Kumasi, <laughs> make sure you don't mention this name <laughs> at Menshia Palace. Well and I believe you will bring his picture, his effigy, yes. 
for everybody yeah. to see. Exactly. Kwamitia. Yes. Now the last days of uh, Ya Asante. So she was, she, was, she was also sent off to Seychelles. So Seychelles. When she was going, mm -hmm. she was paraded before the Ashantis naked. Oh, no. It was deliberate. Yeah, they wanted to put a certain fear in the Ashanti so that nobody would come among them as a leader. And it's a matter of common sense. You see, all along it was men leading them. And when you took away their leader, that man, they were able to raise a woman to lead. To lead. So they felt that these people are dangerous. At any time, they can surprise us. So let us humiliate her to the worst form imaginable. And that's terrible because traditionally, no in any part of Ghana, if a woman comes out naked, even if she's not of her right senses, people rush to cover her because they don't. They, it's so taboo. that was what they did to our to great grandmother. Yeah, that was terrible. Everybody's great grandmother. That's what they did to an African queen mother. They desecrated her, and not only her, all womanhood, including their own queen, uh, uh, Victoria. Mm -hmm. Because whatever Yasantua was made of was not different from that of mm. Queen Victoria. And then, as she was going, we are told that she was walking boldly, confidently, disregard of whatever had happened to her. She didn't bother. Then Ashanti women mustered courage and got close to her and asked her in the Ashanti language, the Chi language, mm -hmm. that our grandmother Yasantua, even as you leave us, mm -hmm. who is going to take care of us? Mm -hmm. Then Yasantua responded that Misumamu, if you say Santi Mema Sa, Pieni Wabasha Musu, I weep for you because Ashanti has no more men to protect the women. As she was going there, men too, you know, very worried of war, many injured, mustered courage, took away all the guns with their hands raised to show that they were coming. Peaceably mm -hmm. and not to fight, just to bid farewell to their woman, uh, to their great queen mother. And so when they were given that chance, they asked Yasantua, Nana, the baby are who the age are why? And Yasantua asked them, Who are you talking to me? And they said, Yeni Asante Emerima. We are the men of Ashanti. Who do you leave us? Way. <laughs> and Yasantua responded that I don't know you, I cannot hear you, because what I know is that all the Ashanti men died on the battlefield. And mark my words, as I go, you will have no more men again. This is the end of all wars. Boom. That was a serious thing she said right there. And when Yasantua was sent to Sichel, indeed she met her son. Nana Frani Indeed. reunited with other Ashanti chiefs. She met Prempe the first as Met well. Prempe, became a Christian, and that was why the royal house has since been Anglican. She became a Christian and started educating herself. So at a certain point, she could read and write in the English language and started doing evangelical work in the Seychelles. But because she was already advanced in age, mm. In 18, uh, 1924, when Prempe was coming back with a lot of those who survived, she was just too, she had already died. died so she died in 1921. Yeah. October 17. Died and then buried. And, then buried. and that's the anniversary we are celebrating yes. today. When you go to Kumasi, there's a famous school named after her, Yasantua Secondary School. When you go to this place, um, uh, 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 37 Military Hospital, mm -hmm. there's a famous female ward named after her and her picture, very beautiful mm -hmm. picture taken in the Seychelles mm -hmm. is also there. And then there are several military barracks in Southern Africa, Southeastern Africa, mm -hmm. named after Yasantua, Yasantua military barracks. And then even in America, many children are named uh, Yasantua. I mean, they're among the black Americans, they named children after this famous Ashanti queen who was able to protect the golden stone. And before I end, let me say that uh, Kwame Nkrumah ever met the Ashanti chiefs because before Nkrumah came to Ghana, he was a professor of black history in Lincoln University. So 
he had read the history of Ya Asantua. So at a certain point, he engaged the Ashanti chiefs and told them that I am second Ya Asantua. Why? Everywhere the colonial masters, if you should call them by that name, went, they were able to seize whatever heritage they had got. Mm. In the case of our land, Ghana, they couldn't take our heritage. That is the golden stool. So it's not only the golden stool of Ashanti. It's the golden stool of the people of Africa that were able to protect it. And this was the woman who did it for all of us. So tell me whatever you want so that I name after Yasantua. And I read from the master's degree dissertation of this last offense, Yine Yafia Kenten, his daughter's master's degree, to the effect that Nkrumah had in mind naming the Accra Airport, now Kotoka International Airport, mm -hmm. after her. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because at that time there was a bitter strife between the Matemeho tradition, UP, mm -hmm. and the CPP that Nkrumah uh, represented, the Ashanti chiefs told Nkrumah that. If you are a second yas and tua, then go and look for a CPP yas and tua and name anything you like after her. But as for our own yas and tua, if she were alive today, she wouldn't have been a CPP woman. She would have been a UP, United Party person. So please, we don't want you to name anything after her. We are not interested in anything. So let the story rest there. We miss an opportunity to name our right. airport. After a great woman like this, because anybody coming into this country, we have been greeted by that. And they'll ask, Who is that? It's a huge, huge opportunity lost. Huge opportunity. And in the Akan language, we say, I mean, those days, people would not be said to be as today. So let's pardon them. Let's pardon them. Quick couple of quick questions before we wrap this up. What do you, in your mind, were the qualities of Yasantwa that? made her effective as a leader? The qualities. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to be a leader, you must be one person who has the ways to move people. You see, when you read John chapter 1 in the Bible, see, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So it's, it is the word of God that created everything. So when you have the right ways, people will follow you. Kwame Nkrumah came to Ghana in 1947 as an ordinary general secretary of the UGCC. But because he had the right words, which the people wanted to hear, and what are the words? Self-government nah. now. People followed him. Mm -hmm. So when Yasantua also had the right choice of words, pushing the people's mind to the days of a Konfanochi was said to two say Bonsu, what you call say Kwajo, or say Yawakoto. Them, then the people felt yes, and with that, and then they, that thing there, they came first to take our king away. They have come second to take the golden stool. Are you sitting there? It moved the people, you know, to rise up and fight. And then those same words being repeated by way of interpretation to the governor that the woman standing there addressing you is telling you that Ashanti would fight until the last person had died. These are the words. So, the power of uh, words to influence people, but also a sense of history, because you knew her history. Very good. So, you see that the woman did not tell them the present. Mm -hmm. She referred their attention to the past, mm -hmm. and a, a glorious past. Mm -hmm. And he felt that if it is the chiefs who have been taken away, you are not different from the men. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, exercising the same valor, Ashanti will be reestablished. I believe that was what he was trying to Tell them. And then another thing, to be a leader, you must not change from the pattern you carve for yourself. Because when Prem, uh, 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 Yasantua addressed them and then the meeting broke up, she could have escaped too. She could have made a link with her friend, her cousin, uh, Nana Franewa, that where is the golden stool? Please let us take it in the <laughs> night to another place. But the woman came back mm -hmm. to fight the governor. Yeah. So if you want to be a leader, you have a focus, never to depart from the focus. What do you think? And then also to be a leader, you shouldn't think about your 
surrounding and your handicap. Mm. You understand? Mm. You always have threats. Yep. You know, you always have shortcomings. But uh, I always look at the success, the big picture ahead of you. Because I believe that Yas and Tua saw the enormity of uh, colonial soldiers mm -hmm. ready for her. Yas and Tua saw guns pointed at her. But none of these things scared her. Her single-minded purpose was to fight the white man and to protect the golden stone. Thank you for that. Um, I would describe her as a general, a military general. But did Yas and Tua have any military uh, training or experience? No military training or experience, only the oral tradition and what she also came to meet, that Ashantis would always fight, always we fight. And when we fight, we win. And this time we have lost. And if we have lost, we can reorganize and come and fight back. And then also you feel I should even extend your own question. Do you realize that there was a famous Ghanaian army, the first African to have been made an officer in the British Army. The, you know, Major Anthony. The, the one who became a diplomat as well, yes. Major Anthony, yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, he, he studied. You know, Major Anthony was from the Qatar area. Indeed. He studied African warfare, Ashanti warfare, and taught the British people. That is why our jungle warfare at Achiansi mm -hmm. is named after him. Mm -hmm. And he became a hero during the Second World War. So your question is also a way of telling the Ghana army and all of us that it's not always that we learn things from the white man and leave it there. We should incorporate our own because it was our own Major Anthony, I think said Anthony, yes, said Anthony. who taught the British African military technology. And that was Ashanti system. He didn't say, I am aware, so who is Ashanti? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. he was a Ghanaian, he was an African. He learned best practice from wherever yeah, he find and it. Where? And he felt that he could, we also had something mm -hmm. to teach these people. After all, the Ashantis fought the British several times, yeah, and they, they won, won about the, three of they them. They won some of the fights. So yeah. Yes, so why do, you <laughs> think, what, why do you have to think what we have yeah. is inferior? Indeed. So this man espoused it, and I'm, I believe that these are those who must be mentioned and celebrated. Mm -hmm. You know, Sir Anthony, Ya Asantua, mm -hmm. Nana Afraniwa, and any other person who has made this country a country. Apart from Kwame Nkrumah, who you, 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 you said uh, was inspired by Ya Santua, do you think any other anti-colonial movements took inspiration from the exploits of Ya Santua? Uh, implicitly, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. Because after Ya Santua was defeated, the colonial masters still told their own governors here that as we send you to the Gold Coast, don't go and disturb the Ashanti people. They are very powerful people. You know what their woman did. If you joke, another woman will come up and even encourage the men to fight. So Ashanti was the place where indirect rule was actually practiced because Ashanti was not made part of the colony. Ashanti, after Yasantua, became only a protectorate. So they governed themselves, only recognizing the colonial governor in Accra. And in fact, Ashanti until 1946 had never been part of the colonial legislative assembly or colonial legislative council, never. They were made to govern themselves, all because of the exploits of uh, Yasantua. And then implicitly again, that was why with the formation of the United Gold Coast Convention, their aim was to win independence. You know, the United Gold Coast Convention was founded in 1947. Mm -hmm right after Ashanti had been made part of the legislative council. Certain people felt very uncomfortable mm -hmm. about the presence of Ashanti, and they wanted the United Gold Coast uh, Convention mm -hmm. that will win independence for the colony, and not Transvolta Togoland, and not Ashanti Protectorate, mm -hmm. and not the Northern, Northern Territory. Territories, mm -hmm. until Kwame Nkrumah came in, mm -hmm. you know, and said, no, independence must be for all of us, territory. and that Sante Hine had him, received him, welcomed him, and gave him the title of Sir Jefo. Thank you so much. Uh, just before we end, what can advocates of uh, women's rights learn from 
the conduct, the yeah, example. I, I love this question of, because yes, this Dua. this often so he and his daughter's uh, thesis mm -hmm. it was an MA on women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that as right in the Bible is stated in the beginning, God created man in his own image. A man and a woman, he made them. So a man is not superior to a woman and a woman is not inferior. And mind you, a woman was not created as an afterthought. We are one and the same. We reflect the image of one God. And whatever a man can do. A woman, given the same opportunity, can do. Yes, and what showed it. Yes, and what And today we have Ghana has produced three chief justices yeah. being females. We are still waiting for our first female president. We are waiting. That is political. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when it comes to an industry, yes, you know, them. we have them. Women As for politics, you stand if they decide to yeah, vote for yeah. you, fine. But, we, but even there, we have got this woman, uh, that woman who contested the election. Uh, that, that, that uh, she is illiterate anyway. Uh, Donko. Ma, Madam Ekwia Donko. Ekwia Donko. Yeah, it's the beginning. Yeah, yeah she started. She, she, yeah, she, she, it, she, do you know she won an international award? Yes. Yeah, just having to contest an election. Mm. She had an international award. Mm, mm. So please, women, when you go to KNUSC, the vice chancellor is a woman. Mm, you, you, uh, you Professor well. Dolphin was a woman. We've got so many Ministry of Ghana women Vice everywhere. Mm -hmm. Whatever a man can do, a woman can also do, mm -hmm. if not better. So you should begin to respect them. After all, uh, I read a philosophy book which says that if it was through a woman that the world fell, it was also through a woman that uh, uh, the world was saved. You know, Eve mm -hmm. was the first to have eaten the mm -hmm. forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. And Mary, without an intercourse with Joseph or mm -hmm. any man, mm -hmm. got pregnant and then gave birth to the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. So the woman's glory, which fell in Eden, actually shot up with the birth of Jesus Christ. Yes, and born 1840, died 1921, October 17th. We are marking 102 years since she passed. What is the greatest takeaway somebody can take away from this conversation we've had? The greatest takeaway is that one, we should learn history all the time so that it will help us to know what happened in the past. Number two, with the history, it will help us to unite and then forge ahead that we can make it because a very weak woman without the necessary accoutrements to fight was able to fight the white man and to protect Ashanti interest. The reason is that, you see, when she lost the war, Ashanti pride was kept intact because the Agodis too was protected. So technically, Ashanti won the war because, won, because the, the stool yeah, went the nowhere. Gold, the war is called <laughs> yeah. the war, war of the Agodis too. Yes. So she won the war. Mm -hmm. And the next thing after the war was that she was the one who saved Ashanti from paying the 50,000 ounces of gold. Mm. Do you know what happened? When Ashanti was incorporated into the British administration, the whites readily, the British readily started importing plenty of goods because the population here had shot up. And Ashantis were more consumers of European goods than the Fanti people mm -hmm. along the mm -hmm. coast. Mm -hmm. And with them, they are allies, the northern people and then the Ewe mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. they had the opportunity buying more from the British people. So when they sat down just one year and calculated and realized the amount of money they were getting from a peaceful Ashanti. They, they just canceled the <laughs> debt and decided to concentrate on trade so that they would make up the deficit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that is it. So that's she it. saved Ashanti a lot. And to a very great extent, she saved the whole nation because the, uh, uh, around that time too, the British feared that Ashanti out of anger was going to join the French. You know, 1884, Berlin Conference. So they came in and the French started making negotiations with portions of the Ashanti mm -hmm. uh, kingdom, yes. like the Baule, yes. like the Ainin, yes. and the, the German people. Mm -hmm. And they were able to lure them to the French side. And they were coming to do the same to the Ashanti people. But because of the good relationship they had with them, not 
disturbing them with the payment again of the 50,000 ounces of gold. But just to trade with them, Ashanti was lured indirectly to stay, stay within the British protectorate. And that means a Ahafo, Brang Ahafo region. What a wonderful step back into history. Um, we checked out what happened at the beginnings of the Asante um, uh, state, nation, and then also focused on Yasantua, the great queen mother of Ijisu, who uh, prosecuted that war, the war of the Golden Stool, uh, ended up being deported, died in Seychelles, and we mark the death of this great person, not just an African, but a, 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 not a woman, but just a great person, a great leader, courageous, fearless, and just determined to do right by her people, to stand by her people. These are examples of leadership that are relevant even today in the 21st century. Thank you so much for uh, this conversation about uh, the great Ya Santua, Queen Mother of Ejisu. And I also thank you because the truth is that uh, you are born in your family, into a family mm -hmm. before you come out as a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Look at where you come from and you have initiated this mm -hmm program. Mm -hmm. It shows that Ghana is one. Whether the person is Ewe, Fante, Achim, Akwamu, Ahanta, Sefi, Nzema, we are one people. We are indeed one God people. bless you Yes, too. you're my big brother. So uh, God bless you too. This uh, it has been the Couple Day Show. And um, please, if you have not uh, subscribed, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Hit that notification button after you've subscribed. And then when more interesting videos uh, come up, you will be the first to know. What did you learn from this particular conversation? What stood out for you? Put your comments down below and I promise to respond to every single one. Thank you very much and God bless.